This is Audrey Sinead with Cooking Couture Atlanta. Honey, and I am so excited. Oh ah! Listen, we're about to have some kitchen conversations with one of my favorite people in the world. Now, we happen to have the same last name, and that doesn't really have anything to do with <laughs> why she's one of my favorite. It does have a little bit to do with it, but listen. You know how you say you can't pick your family? Well, this is somebody that if I wasn't related to her, I would be her friend. I would like her. And the only reason I think that we wouldn't be friends is because I'm not good at jocking people, I'm not good at being a groupie. And I think that if I wasn't related to you, I would truly be a groupie. Yeah, I would be. Oh my God. Yeah, I would be. Yeah, let me tell you. <clears throat> and I, and, and I thought about this. Because, yeah, because I, yeah, I'm not good at like jocking people. Because <laughs> see, that's how I would be. But that's not how I was raised anyway. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, look, like, that ain't happening. But I would, I probably would like really admire you from afar. Like, you like, she's so good. I've always stuff. you're extremely talented. Now, and it's so funny, and I'm not trying to be funny at all, but everything that I love about you is the things I love about myself. <laughs> no, when you, you dress your ass up. You fly. You fly, you're talented, you're creative, you love it. But I'm going to tell you the things I respect so much about you as an adult. Um, not only do you handle your own, you have an amazing relationship with your mother and your family. You love family. You stand for what you believe in. And I really respect that. And you have been so effing consistent. Like you are the same. You're an evolved version. I see you evolving all the time and getting better and more solid. But the people you down with, you down with. The causes you down, you down with. The shit you believe in, you believe in. And I respect the shit. I really do. I really do. And I just think that you're amazing. So I would like to toast little sweet mind. I would like to toast to you. To Dr. Tiffany. Yes, so I mean, girls. I know, but I'm just so, you follow through. You just, you accomplish stuff. I mean, you went to school on ROTC scholarship and are you still in the Have you no. retired? Oh, yes. When did you retire? Oh my God. Oh my God. No, let's drink. Okay. Cause you ain't drink. You drink, I mean, I mean. 22 years. Really? 22 mm -hmm. years. When did you retire? 22 years. Uh, I thought you were well, 30. Uh -huh. I would have because, mm -hmm. first of all, I did 11 years enlisted because I didn't read the fine print and no one told me that I didn't have to wait 11 years before I became a commissioned officer. First of all, I never wanted to be in the military. Let's be clear about that. Um, I joined the military because I needed um, educational support. Okay. Um, I was hell bent on going to the University of Missouri, Columbia. Listen, and, and uh, uh -huh. I could not afford it. We won't even talk about the desegregation program and how it did not set me up for scholarships. You know, all of that racism and like, yeah, that's yeah. All because cool. me going to school in the inner city, I got scholarships. I got right. journalism scholarships to go right. into KU, right? Which was just an hour and a half away from. And then at. Mm, high school, being bused two hours every day. Um, they weren't trying to ensure that um, students who look like me was afforded the opportunity, the awareness to these scholarships. Okay. But if all of the students at the school who didn't look like me had decided that they were going to the University of Missouri Columbia, and let me just say for the record <laughs> that as a 1988 graduate from my wow. high school, I don't there were over a hundred of us who enrolled in the University of Missouri Columbia, mm -hmm. and I am one of two who actually graduated four years later. Okay, they graduated, but how many went? A hundred over a oh, hundred of went. us oh, wow. went really? to the University of Missouri Columbia and really? eight and. Only two. I'll, I'll, let, I'm, let me do this. I'll say five. Really? And I was the only African American out of that graduating class. Oh, so this was white and black? Yes. All white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But wow. while there, 
not being able, on scholarship, not being able to walk on the girls' basketball team, um, and holding four jobs. I have a testimony. So all through my college undergrad, uh -huh. I kept four jobs. Four? And still was not enough to pay for college. And so one day walking across campus, I ran into a friend of mine who um, said, had you considered joining the reserves? They pay for your school. And but you did ROTC in high school, right? Oh, I thought you no, no, did. No, no, no. I just worked right. a lot with the recruiter and helped him meet his quota. Yeah. And he kept saying, why don't you graduate from, like, I, when I come to y'all school, I don't have to work. You do all of the work for me. Why aren't you going to, I mean, why would you join the military? I said, y'all wear the same thing every day. <laughs> <laughs> are you a uniform? I know that, right. I ain't not doing it. But, fast forward. I had to, that was my only, and to keep from putting my parents in debt, that they couldn't afford. So, I joined. So, you signed up for the reserves? What, so, what, what, sophomore year? No. Freshman? Freshman year. Okay, I thought you went there. Okay, I thought, I thought you semester. went there. Okay. After my you first story, semester right? of my uh, freshman year, I joined, and that summer, so I did what was called split options, so that first summer, after I completed my first year, of uh, college, of undergrad. Mm -hmm. Then I went um, to basic training. Then I came back in my second year where wow. I served as a reservist and then went to do my job training, which at the time was a 70 Juliet uh, med, uh, supply, medical supply. And, uh, but graduated successfully from the zoo in 92. At that time, I was certified to do a direct commission. But I didn't know, and, and, like, oh. and no one told me. And so I stayed enlisted. That's, for that's a little like racism, though. No, that's a lot. Okay. But I stayed enlisted for 11 years. But I don't regret that. I don't regret that. And yeah, then it was I mean, known, that's because we don't live with regrets, but that wasn't cool. Yeah. So it was after I um, earned my MBA, so my first master's, that um, I learned. What was your first master's in? Um, that's just a business associate. Uh, what did you get your undergrad in? Um, English Lit. Oh, excuse me, yeah. honey. And then a bit, then an MBA. Then an MBA. Okay. Then a Master's of Education Administration. Then yes, certified in four certificates from Harvard. And what was the four certificates from Harvard, honey? Let's so, get it, let's um, get it out. One, of one is um, one was um, educational leadership. Okay. Uh, one was data and uh, how to obtain data. Uh, one was building communities, and one was in parent engagement. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And so while working for Chicago Public Schools, I was afforded the opportunity to keep going back and forth to do that. Ooh. Then, just in 2018, after a 10-year stint, I earned my doctorate. Congratulations, Dr. Tupin. So, so you. what's your doctorate in? Um, so it's in educational leadership. And my um, dissertation was on how, basically, how adults learn. Oh, right. Okay. And and um, do adults learn differently? So the way adults learn is, if you're trying to teach me something, you can't just teach it to me. I need to see. Make, I need, it needs to be relevant for me to to grasp to it, grab, uh -huh. understand it, want to do it. So. Don't just lecture me. Don't book teach me. I need hands on. Okay. And it's like going to a workshop and the facilitator is just talking to you the whole time. And you, and you fall asleep. But then there is an expectation for you to go back yeah, and yeah. implement whatever it is that you just said for three or four hours learning. So the best way to ensure that I receive the information is to allow me to begin to apply it in that moment, build out plans in that moment, and practice it in that moment so that I now, because when I get back to wherever, wherever I am and the facilitator is gone, I have questions now. Who do I inquire of? So now that I got to take time to look for you to ask these questions, I'm just... I'll put it to the side and I'm going to continue to do 
how big, how big the right? I so we that. don't, um, we don't gain from that. But going back, so I retired because when I became an officer, um, one of the hardest things I had to do, I was, um, I was medical, I was a, a hospital administrator. I was a 70 Bravo. So my job was, if you remember MASH, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was part of a cash unit, combat support hospital, and our job mm -hmm. was to set up hospitals in combat zones. Oh, wow. And so my job as a that hospital was really administrator mad. was like determining what type of hospital. Would we have a veterinarian? Would we have a dental? How many beds the hospital would have? What kind of care and services would we provide in that area? But. Um, so, and, and, and most of my military career was as a reservist. So that's 22 years, most of it was as a uh, reservist. But in those times when there was actual um, war and me being a commander, I would have to, I, I had young soldiers who were new mothers, new wives, and to have to call my soldier in and say, hey, you're being mobilized and you're being deployed. And as a new mom, who are you going to get to keep your child? And so what you do know about me is I have a lot of goddaughters. And my one godson, my one baby, Kyra, he ought to make sure that I only have my one boy, grown man now married, got a baby and all that stuff. But I waited until I was 23 days from my 40th birthday when I gave birth to my first biological child. And at that time, I was not in a command position, but we were, what was going on oh, at that time? So there was a lot of stuff going on. You felt it when you seen what that was like, you wouldn't have left her. I wouldn't have left her. And so I, I didn't want to be called in for somebody to say to me, Captain Tippett, or at that time, Lieutenant Tippett, um, we're going to need 40 years in this place. That's why I retired. Because I didn't wait 40 years to have a baby for somebody to tell me if I happened to be mobilized or deployed, that I was going to have to leave my child. And so I went, I said, I said all that to say that when I had to do it, when I had to you were face those with notifications, it. it was challenging for me to tell someone else whether they waited your... till they was 40 or they was 23, 20, it, matter. it didn't matter. You got to leave your child. You got to leave your child in the care of someone else. Wow. And so now. It was different. It being was real. A mother, being on the other side so, of the desk, I didn't wait for that conversation. And um, when I realized I had enough time in to retire, and it wasn't the same anymore. It wasn't fun. Um, so a lot, a lot going on. That's what. Um, so my one friend Kim is still in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember she came down. Kim is mm -hmm. in St. Mm -hmm. Louis, and, and she's in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And she did some enlisted time, and but anyway, she's back in reserves. But she's, um, she said the same thing. It's you know, I've had a few people say, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's, it's not the same. And, um, I, uh, you know, my, my goal was to make Lieutenant Colonel was not general, which I would have made Lieutenant Colonel had I commissioned earlier. Yeah. You know? See? So where but, did you, you end know, up? As a captain. Work? And there's oh, yeah. so much respect for captains. You know, all of the... Okay, so didn't you, because um, <laughs> that sound that we we can understand, captain sound like the head. That sound like the highest mm -hmm. to and me. And somebody that somebody, somebody that's not know, in it. It's right. out because I even told him when I, the, when I was telling captain. him about it, when I was saying I was like she's captain. Uh, <laughs> there's a major. There's a lieutenant colonel. There's oh, a the captain. Yes, there's a general. Well, the captain sound like right. it's. Right. I was like, and we captain in the You know why? Because captains are. Um, I don't even remember field grade officers. So we are, you're usually that company commander. Okay. And you're like, you're pretty much the one that's 
in charge of all of them listed. Okay, if you can say, if you can pick one thing that you learned being in the military or how the military changed you or grew you, what would that be? Oh, I, I did not want to ever give credit to the military. Um, oh, come on. It was Damn. too big a part of your life. I know, but I tried my best. I tried my best not to give. Um, Why? I don't know, because I just wanted to be so anti-military, but I gave really? 22 years. <laughs> um, you gave 20? Come on, man. 22 years, but I wanted to be anti-military. But in all honesty, um, the discipline that I have, the I, I won't give up. I don't care if it hurts me, kills me. Um, I am, because of the military, and of course I gotta give Marianne her credit. I gotta give Bunny his credit. Um, but I'm gonna finish what I started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, so let me go. I want you to touch on my favorite part of your life. Um, you know, your life's like this whole movie. You know, I've been living through you. You know that. You always say that. I have been I living by Cassie through girl. you because I, <laughs> I want to I wanna take credit for turning you on to Gucci when I sent you those Gucci underwear a long Wait, time ago. Because I was like, I can't wear this, but I know somebody that can. <laughs> you know, I still tell people, um, I was in my garage and I saw this old stroller and uh, I happened to be on the phone with mom. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, man, Archie was going to buy Kennedy a Gucci stroller. <laughs> she was going to set my baby up. But yeah, you turned me on to it. I know, because it was so you to me. It, 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 <laughs> but it was so you to me. Mm -hmm. When I, I mean, I bought all the purses and stuff, but when I seen the clothes, I was like, oh, this is what she need to be wearing. This is what she need to wear. Yeah, so that's my little nickname. Gucci! That's my, 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 all my peers. Get my out of here! That's cute! And uh, if that, I put on something Louis Vuitton or I'm carrying a Louis Vuitton, what you, what, what, what's what selling out? What you doing? You selling out? Oh, that is so cute. So, okay, let me tell you about my favorite. Oh, let me tell you my favorite, but my favorite part of your life was, and I want you to just talk about it. When you were, um, bodybuilder. <laughs> Oh my God! I was like, you, I just, I, I just always thought you were just so extremely dope. That was, um, you think the military had anything to do with that? So yeah, okay. um, always, so here, here is, is the military. Not only finishing what I start, uh -huh. but not accepting less. Okay. So in the military, you have to take a physical fitness test. So in the army, it's how many push-ups you can do in two minutes, how many sit-ups you can do in two minutes, and how fast you can run the two-mile run. Now, okay. I guess that's still the fitness test on the army. Yes. <laughs> but your there's a, a point scale, and the point scale is based on your age at that time mm -hmm. and uh, whether you're male or female. So whenever, and the highest score you can get on the test is 300. Okay. So it's 100 points for each category. Okay. Um, and then 60, if you don't get at least 60 points per, you fail the test. So failure is never an option. And when I would train, I'm training to, to do 100. So I never looked at how many push-ups I needed to do to get the Just to pass. pass. Just okay. to pass. It was always about Never just to pass. Max. It was always That's right. max. That's right. That's right. And so, and it would be interesting because... Let's just say if I was 27 years old, female, and I only needed to do 16 push-ups, when I got to 16, I'm still going. And they're like, you can stop now. Huh? No, what? you can stop. Because I need 42, or I need 52, because that's how I train. Because my mentality is this. If you train for the 100%, Let's just say on the day of your Where's exam. Right book? Oh, All right, I got I'm finished. I'm sorry. Go 55. ahead. I got the title. All right, I, I ain't playing. I'm praying. That's the title. <laughs> All right, finish. But um, if you train for 100%, let's just say, you know, female, you're on your cycle, you're cramping or 
got migraine, you got, you know, the yeah. night before you had a bad day or whatever, your body has trained. But if you're only training just for enough to just pass in your body, you show up with these cramps, you're not going to fail. And failure is not an option. So if you train to succeed, should you have a bad day, a bad moment, you're already conditioned you're already over you're already for over success. That's right. That's right. And so um, I, I remember being a hardhead in basic training. So this is this is when the physical fitness journey really started. You know, I've been an athlete all my life. Right. But you playing basketball with the men at the family reunion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, in basic training. I'm, I'm the person who believes you don't need to holler at me to get me to conform or to do anything that you need me to do. Now, I know that that's a part of the whole part of it, world. but don't talk nuts to me. I know that's right. And I had a drill sergeant talking crazy. who liked to talk crazy. So there's consequences. So if I don't conform, there's consequences. So what can you do to me? Make me do push-ups. I got you, y'all. <laughs> And one day I was in the bathroom putting a relaxer in my hair in basic training. We had it was Saturday off. And I went to do like this to part and you see the muscles. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, you had to brush your shoulders off. I've been skinny mini all my life, you know, right? Tall, skinny, long legs, nothing, no shape, you know, like I wasn't that girl. So when I flex and it's not. And you know, because they got us eating three meals a day, so the potatoes, the protein was coming in, the car was hitting it. Right. Yeah. And I was like, purposely looking for ways to get drunk. That's what it's called. Get drunk. Drop and give me 20. Drop. Or they tell one of my soldiers, drop. I'm dropping with them. I heard that. So, I always was, I mean, I just kind of really re like that. <laughs> and. My oh, right. my unit, we had to send, they had to send some people away for what was called Master Fitness Training. Okay. So that was in layman's or civilian world, so um personal personal trainers certification. Oh, okay. but in the military is called Master Fitness Training. Okay. Quite naturally I was selected as one of the two people that my unit sent for this okay. training. Uh, very rigorous. Um but when I came back I had a new like in that training, we learned about the anatomy, really your bones and muscles, and you know uh, how to eat That's nutrition cool. and That's how good. to eat right, and you know all of those things. And so I came back, and I was pretty much going to my life was the gym. Every day I left the Wesley house, I was at the gym five days a week. Most women were in there looking for Mr. Right, Mr. Wrong, but. I was doing all that training and it wasn't my, I wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't getting what I needed. And so that's when I realized that I hadn't learned what I needed to learn for my body. And um, I, my mechanic, we was just having a conversation and uh, he invited me to go with him to Chicago to the bodybuilders, uh, the national okay. bodybuilders thing. And when I got there, because I've never been a tumbler, I was a cheerleader, but didn't really know how, I was always afraid to do the flips. I would, Matthew Mickey's, so tall. barely, you yeah. know, barely make, I can do my cartwheels and my round dogs, but the, you know, the, all of them. Just have them. But see, that's so funny, because people don't know, like tumbling is a thing in St. Louis. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Folks to on concrete. Oh, yeah. It's a thing in Chicago, too. Is it? Oh, my, oh, my God. In St. Louis, it is a straight thing. So, like, dudes, you just tumble, just hit a back. When we came back from that, I was like, I want to, I'm going to be. And he was like, if you're serious, I'll sponsor you. So, um, how, what is this? Yes. Oh, I can't even think of that. There was a competition where you would take your before. They call them challenges now. Your Have you talked to your athlete. daughter about it? Has she seen those pictures? Does she know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm still, you know, I still work out. I still, um, as a matter of fact, since we've been on COVID, my church in Chicago, um, we haven't done it in a while. But the church every, Saturday, uh -huh, every Saturday, 
I, I led, uh, you know, to keep the members engaged, I led Fit for Faith. Oh, on, um, on Zoom. On Zoom. Oh! I received that one. So, <laughs> I was very interested in how these wings taste because I was trying something new. Hey, right there. I sound good. Let me, let me see. I was thinking I need to put lime over it and I didn't. Mm -hmm. Situated on my plate. <laughs> mm. Very tasty. Did it come out good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm like, I done fell in love with the air fryer. Mm -hmm. And it went straight, it was frozen. It went straight from the freezer, like totally frozen, mm -hmm. to the um, air fryer. And this is the first time I'm gonna show you this. I ever seasoned anything with just one seasoning. Wow. It was very difficult for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you be wanting to throw two or three. Mm -hmm. So this tequila lime seasoning, I put mm -hmm. a lot of it on it. Mm -hmm. This tequila lime seasoning, I took the frozen wings and I put them on the tray mm -hmm. and I just put seasoning all mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. And I put them in the on, um, I put the air fryer on 385 mm -hmm. and I did it for 20 minutes on one side and then it was like so much water and it, somebody would have thought it was sauce. That was water because mm -hmm. that's all I put on mm -hmm. it. So I poured that off, mm -hmm. turned it over, seasoned it. seasoned it heavily again mm -hmm. and put it in for another 20 minutes and so like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, this will get crispy chicken wings. Tequila line chicken wings, and I wanted because I wanted to try it because I put so much stuff on there. I'd be like, I try this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's my first time. So tahini and lemon pepper are my go-to seasons for everything. Really? What you for say? Who? Tahini. Tahini. It's a mm -hmm. it's a, a, a Hispanic. Mmm. Uh, wait. In my, in my purse, I might have. That's how I ask you to say it, or if not, I'm going to remind you to send me a picture that yes. when you get home. Yeah. So Seasoning is everything, man. Uh, it's the butter, it's everything. Rosemary, garlic. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, those three things I usually don't go without lemon pepper, rosemary, garlic. But, yeah. And the reason why I stopped using lemon pepper is because. In a discussion about me, I'll never forget my brother, my daughter. It was like two people, they was like, if I eat any more lemon pepper. <laughs> oh, my middle name. <laughs> oh my God, they was, I was like, am I that bad? Yeah. And they were like, oh my God. Tahini is my, so my I try to salt uh, seasoning. So, um, cause it's a kind of a Cajun, Mm -hmm. So you like a little spicy. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know. I should it's, it's rare and it's just good. And now it comes in a liquid. Um, it's good. It's really good. Um, I'm not here to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all right. I will make sure you hit me to that seasoning because mm -hmm. I want to know about different seasons that you mix and you try. I, I'm sure y'all have it here, but it's it's coming everywhere. I'm sure I can find it. I just don't know where to find it. But if you don't know to look, mm -hmm. it's probably mm -hmm. been right in front of my right face. Right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so excited about continuing this conversation with you. So, the one thing that um, we talked about everything that you did and you accomplished, but one of the major things that you've accomplished that Can I, I have. Can I give a it, shout out though? Yes, please. To my Air Force Academy High School. Really? Yeah, because you were like in the military at school, right? Okay. So Go I am, um, I went to Chicago, you know, I left Chicago, uh, St. Louis in 2000. Um, and I was asked to come oh, and, um, yeah, asked to come and transition wow. a general high school to a military academy. These were things, this oh, was new. So okay. basically a military academy is think about a traditional JRTC program in a high school where you have select but students. the whole high school. But mm -hmm. in military academies, every student is a cadet. And so Chicago has six. We have three Army, one Air Force, mm -hmm. one Marine, one Navy. 
My Air Force Academy is the only public Air Force Academy high school in the nation. So all the rest of them aren't public? No, they're public, but they're not Air Force. Okay. So, you know, like, um, even St. Louis has some public, um, Cleveland, I think, ended up becoming a, a, a military academy. Okay. But it was Army. Okay. There's other cities, Philadelphia, they have Navy and Army. There hasn't been but one public Air Force. Okay. And that's what, um, I'm the founding principal of that. So I needed to just give a shout out to that. And then another thing that you've done and you've done extremely well is, um, so tell me, I want to make sure I get it exactly right. I know that you're an ordained minister. Mm -hmm. And so because you preach at a church monthly, at least I know. Not necessarily. Um, oh, not necessarily monthly. Mm -hmm. So would you be considered a pastor? So I am. So my pa my pastor, our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Eldenar Jakes, uses the title pastor for his associate ministers. So okay. some churches they call them ministers. Okay. He uses the term pastor. Okay. And so my role at West Point is I'm the executive pastor. Oh. So okay. as an executive pastor, it's my job to. I'm over all of the ministries in the church. So oh, uh, okay. Sunday school, um, okay. the women's ministry, the men. So what I do is provide leadership and training or leadership training for those lead servants of those ministries. Okay. So I'm supposed to support them with any um, uh, activities that they're doing. Um, if we're doing church-wide things and just how to move them to be better leaders. I facilitate the training um, for that. And mm -hmm. every now and then, I get an opportunity to preach. Oh, uh, so I just got blessed when I was in Chicago and you preached. Yes. Oh, so yes. you don't preach all the time. Mm -mm. And um, because our pastor is dedicated. Uh, some people might see it as, oh, you know, but he loves what he does. And he's good at what he so does. He's always there. And he's all, you know, he's always there. So when, you know, those times when he will take um, a break, so we have an assistant him? to the pastor mm -hmm. um, who is there to carry on for him and in his absence. And he will usually appoint her. And then oh, I guess if there's a pay, I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I, um, our church is one of the few churches who the deacon, the head of our deacons is a female. Ooh, and she's not a deaconess. She's a deacon. She's a ordained. What's the difference? N normally deaconess or the wives of deacons. And a lot of, you know how like a lot of churches still don't believe in female preachers right. and pastors. Right. They definitely don't believe in female preachers. I deacons. know that's right. Because the deacon is really supposed to kind of check they're the, the pastor. Like, they're the arm, well, they're the arm, they're the armor bearers in, in a sense to um, support the, the pastor. You know, they are who the pastor leans on who? and provides support and um, guidance. Um, you don't twist. For the congregation. So they are, um, so yeah, so, but my pastor is um, a promoter of female preachers. We have, that's cool. One, two, that's real three, cool. four, five, I think it's five of us currently, five females. How many males? Um, one, two, three, is it four? Which maybe four? It's more female than male. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If my if my numbers are serving me correct, yes. Is Joseph a um, PS? Okay. Mm -hmm. Joseph is her ex, but well, okay, we don't yeah, that's that. a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, my daughter my daughter has it bad because um, both her parents are both her parents are uh, ordained ministers. Yes. Wow. Okay. So, what was that like being in the military, being a pastor, and I mean, I want to say, man, I just, I, wow. Okay, I don't know what I want to say, like, cause you, 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 you well, always I'm amazing. So, I'm trying to figure out what my association was, like, um, I guess, and just how I carried myself. Um, 
They were like two different worlds. But I think because because you don't look or you don't really act like a pastor. You don't look like. Okay, that. so you know what's funny? <laughs> if I'm at the airport, mm -hmm. I go to the airport like right now, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting and having you a conversation. All right. And somebody says, so what do you do for a living? I say, one, I'm a principal. Two, retired military. Three, I'm an ordained minister. No, no, no. And it's just like, well, <laughs> wait a minute. Then what is it that you think I do? But just, well, you just look on like the surface. A, well, okay. I, so never. I see you look like a model. Okay. I can see you being an actress. Okay. Um, and then, because I know you, you know, I can see you being a singer, an actress, a model. Oh. That's my, okay. that's, you know, and you can do all those. Okay. You can sing, act, and model, but anyway, that's... But, but it's just so funny, uh, the... And you know it. The, the, the things that I have been... Pat but it is funny but because... Most, most, most... Because people on. need to move beyond stereotypes of yeah. what a preacher look like and what a preacher look like. You know. It's, 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 it's biased. Okay. stereotypes. Okay. But when 90% of the people don't look like you. Okay. 95. Okay. I mean, you can't. You but can't. I, I, I don't. I you, are, you are. You are. Why would you be a no It's I'm you not. that are, it's different. Okay. I can accept that. You know what I mean? I couldn't at first, but I can now. Because <laughs> I ain't going to stop being who I am. Like, if I'm going to the grocery store, this is how I look. No. I don't walk out the house. You ain't preacherish. Uh -huh. You ain't preacherish. <laughs> and you ain't preachy. No, I'm like, not. You make me want to, like, I, I love to suck. But that's good because I can hook you with, let's talk about fashion. And then we can. Everything else. And then we can. I mean, we can talk about God. Like, I'm, I, mean, I love the Lord. I just don't love the way Christians display the Lord. I don't love the way they love the Lord. But I love the Lord. I have a relationship with God that's, that's amazing. That's important. Right. I have an amazing relationship with God. Like, I wouldn't be here without God. But all what I see and perceive as Christianity and how they go about it, you know, I like to say this. Hmm. Go ahead and say this. I got, all right. I'm going to tell you what I, I, I like, like to say. say. I like what you just said. <clears throat> In my world, Christianity... It's like you and family say it. kindergarten, preschool, and it's time to elevate and move and evolve past that. We blame everything on the devil. Nobody accepts responsibility for their own actions. Um, the churches are not empowering people. In the word that I have read, back and forth, because I mean, you know, I've been a church girl. I mean. You can't really be a tippy girl without like, being a really church girl. Be a I mean, girl you gotta be a church, church girl. girl. Um, you can you can stray all you want to. Yeah, but, but that, you that yeah, there ain't, ain't no way to that, say that you. No, no, no. no. I know all. I know. I know the scriptures. I know that my favorite scripture is Romans eight twenty eight. Be anxious for nothing but everything. But anyway, I don't want to preach. That's what I do not want to do. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, I'll leave the preaching to her. But like I, I love the Lord and I know the word, but what I do know is the word said when, when Jesus left, he said, you'll do greater things than me. Mm -hmm. I just came to be the example. When do we do the greater? Every The whole church system, all of religiosity is designed around keeping people dependent, <laughs> sad, defeated. Yeah. It's nothing about empowering. When do you That's a big when, when do you take responsibility for your actions and realize that you're empowered? The things that come out of your mouth, the actions that you do, you're in control. The devil ain't done that. If the devil did it, you submit it to you studying under cuz I don't feel like where I where I study. And but you know what? Here's you said how that, you said that to me before and I remember it was the same. It was so many years ago. It, I mean, but Nothing has changed. But how do you escape that? So people are so caught up on religion mm -hmm. and denominations, mm -hmm. and they should be caught up on relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about 
what you said. I have a relationship. I couldn't function without my relationship. And so if we spent more to God, time. Because that's everything. If we spent more and, time. And that doesn't include caring what everybody think and everybody see and everybody. I'm and, touching and agreeing with you because if we spent more time building relationships with God, then no one can tell you you're not empowered. No one can tell you you can't evolve. No one can tell you because you are listening to the one who since the beginning of time has said you're going to be greater. You are greater. Like his promises are yes and amen. They cannot be returned to him void. That's his word. So stop. If you feel if you feel like people who stand in pulpits or wherever um or locked in systems. And then they judge. They judge. They, judge. they, they, they worry about what somebody drinking versus their energy and their love and but what they're doing. But you're judging. You're judging. I'm not judging. You're, you're judging. judging. You're judging. Mm-hmm. And so. I'm judging the Christians. Right. You are. And and you putting us all in the same. Um, you putting us all in the same book. category. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so you know that's that that's that ain't so fair. Not fair. I know. Um, but I like doing it because um, the, uh, <laughs> I do. I, I really like. I mean, part of it is really just like you like being confrontational. Oh yeah, I like fucking uh, with them because okay. they because all they know is just that. But it's like, what do you feel? What did God empower you? You we have we possess everything we need or the power right is. now. To be successful, to what be. you're talking about is a Jim Jones, Jim Jim. What's the man? Uh, the one that Kool Aid Jim Jones. Yes, a Jim Jones mentality. <laughs> you're you're most thinking about most people that. have that because they they look for all of the answers to come from, from the past. And he's so perfect, and he's right, so, right, 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 and everything. And then all this little so, stuff that they don't even live towards. So they mean as hell. You have to be surround <laughs> you know you know yourself. You know the Christians mean as hell. They mean. Think for themselves, who study to right. show themselves approved unto God, who don't take everything that the the uh, the man of God or the woman of God tells them. They listen. Because the man and woman got to do what the fuck they want to do. They, they go study. <laughs> Lord have her. Jesus. You know um, they are. They, they go. <laughs> well, they are. We are. And, and we're confessing. And we're asking for forgiveness because at the end of the day, we still human. And that's why I was saying off camera, it's a journey. You're, there is no perfect person. There will never be a perfect person. That's why we, that's why our God is so sovereign and he's so good and forgiving because he already knew, like, first of all, God ain't doing nothing new. Okay, everything so you said all, 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 all right. Everything has been set in order. Mm-hmm. And we're walking under his will in his will. So he does not expect perfection, but what he expects is that you have relationship and in your relationship, you realize you have moral conscience. So you know when you out here ain't living right. What's ain't living right? What do that mean? Um living living against what the word of God says. Okay, so what's that? What the word of God say? What's living against? Give us an example of what's living against the word of God. Fornicating, adultery. Oh, All right. It doesn't mean it doesn't. It's not happening. But it's happening all the time. So and you so really we, think that's what? All right. And so, but you overeating is against the word of God. Then that's what drinking is too. Huh? Over drinking. Over drinking. Yes, it's not drinking. I'm not. Oh, I was good to not say. Not drinking, but drinking to intoxication. That's my goal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, cousin. Here's what I here if 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 nothing else comes from this conversation. Okay. One, I want you to stop being judgmental. How am I judgmental? Because they because you have classified every Christian. Oh, uh, they so lame. To be so lame. So now they so call, lame. They so, so unempowered. All, the all they do is put everybody else down. I'm a Christian, so now you can't be. I'll be one too. What difference do it make? Everybody be what? And then like. 
Okay. No. So first of all, stop doing that. All right. And then focus on what you're doing. So if you don't want any woman or man of God telling you, focus on your relationship. Oh, totally. Always. Oh, and then when you're focused on your relationship and you're daily talking to God and saying, God, what is your will? Because it's already established. She's already established where ours is going to be five days from now, 50 days really? from now. Really? So you don't think I have any control of it? You think so? I'm just a robot and whatever mm -hmm. this God I'm has ordained for me yep. is what's going to happen. Yep. I don't yep. have no control. I'm not saying you don't have control. I don't have no free will. I don't have no you choice. You do have free will. So you it's just going to happen. Will. You well, if it's anything. already ordained, if they, if because it's God it's, knows everything I'm gonna do, exactly. then I'm like, he's already I'm established not doing everything. I think he's established. No, he has not established for you not to do anything, because that's not who you are. That's not who you've been created to be. You will never, you, Audra, will never be able to not do anything. You won't. Right, it's called um, ADHD. <laughs> no, it's called people like, are tipping and everybody else is tipping and everybody else is tipping and everybody else is poured into you and made you be the woman that you are. You are. No, but it, it doesn't matter if this God is already determined what's going to happen. It does Because you don't know what it is. Because you don't know what it is. It wouldn't matter if you knew what it is, and then you can be like, well, since I know God wants me to go left, I'm just going to purposely go right. Now, you're not in the will of God, and you're being uh, contrary. Man, we ain't use that word anymore. <laughs> and like it was just word. like with me, being that basic trainer. If the drill sergeant told me, hollered at me and told me to go left, I went right. Because I was being contrary, <laughs> and I knew, however, that there were going to be consequences. So when you make the free will choice, oh, I get free will, but I thought he already I knew did not everything. Say that. You have, I thought he, you had, I thought he totally you knew have the right he to decide whether you want to trust him and live according to his blueprint that's already his home. blueprint, or what you people have. Girl, um, you say you. <laughs> What you people? You fall fresh in the name of Jesus. Yes. Fall yes. fresh yes. right yes. now yes. and control yes. the situation, yes. God, yes. as you would control it, yes. as you would do it, Lord, yes. as you would have it, Lord, and do you, Lord? Keep on playing. Keep on playing. Uh huh. Keep on playing with that thing. I'll be back here in a year, standing at the church with you. Because uh, you don't went through all your courses and, and, and now you're accepting your college. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop playing. No, no, Stop no. Playing. No calling me. <laughs> Stop calling me to open up another bottle of wine. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. They all do it. Mm -mm. They all do it. Okay. Then the church putting on people. You know what? I'm going to tell you. You know what? And I know this one has nothing to do with you in the Catholic Church. You Do you know? Did you know? Did you know? Fun fact. That the Catholic Church decided that all the priests would be celibate because they get a insurance policy on the priest. And when the priest died, the money was going to their wives and the family. Because priests used to could get married. Mm -hmm. But then they decided to to ordain that they all had to be celibate so that when the priest died, the money would go to the Catholic Church. I've never heard that before, but I'm, I'm not going to refute re it. What I will do is I will do my research. Right, but that's why it started. So definitely check it out. Wait, so did you just see what I did for you? Mm -hmm. Did you see what I just did for you? Well, what I'm saying I is... I listened and I said, okay, I'll receive that for information and then I'll go and do research on my own. I mean, that's not so far-fetched. Right. It's not so far-fetched. No, it's not like heard it before. before. But so that's, that's why, that's why they started to make... I mean, I have to receive That's why they started to make... And just because you're saying that. I don't have no, to receive No, and that's exactly how I feel. Even, exactly. Even that's though all you, I'm saying you. Even though you Just have because somebody's standing up in a pulpit telling you all of this stuff. Well, see, they don't know that. I do that. my 13 People degrees. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't know a whole lot. 
No, but what I'm saying is. I know is, I earned all of them. I know that's going to be on record with that. I know. <laughs> Ain't nobody gives me nothing. I want to do it. I want a certificate from Harvard. Okay. Shit. <laughs> that shit's sexy as a motherfucker, but anyway. Um, pay for it. <laughs> are you allowed to be sexy, uh, Master Pastor? Because you are. I don't know if you're allowed to. <laughs> My pastor allowed me to be who I am. Um, but do you realize that you're sexy? So, I'm just wanting to know if you're going to admit it. Because you are like sexy. a motherfucker. Okay, I appreciate that. You, sexy. Don't, you don't think you're sexy? Fly. You, oh, you want to be fly but Drift. not sexy? The new word the kids say. Uh, no, One of my students walked up to me like, Captain, you, you dripping. Oh, dripping. no, yeah, you drip. I'm now, that is always, but so you don't think you're sexy. So you, I have sex appeal. Okay. That's I, why I'm in the gym. I'm proper man. And that's why I'm in the gym. And I know, because I know this is the body I want when I grow up. When I grow up, I've been trying to get this body to be disproportionate. <laughs> I've been trying to get this body and all my life. That I am, we gonna say it on We here. are not gonna talk about no age. You want it already? I'm already gonna they, blurb out when you said you graduated. I mean, if they, right. if they, you know, if they do the math, whatever. What I'm, math? I'll, I'll be happy. They like, dang, really? And and really? She really? I love her. Okay. Girl. I love you, and every time I'm around you and I see you, I love you even more. Like you, you dope. You like the you, you just you everything, and I, I, I thank God. <laughs> I thank you know God for you. I think you kind of started this um, saying that in a lot of ways we are cut from the same cloth. You was just a little more raw than I am. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to be a little more tame. Well, that's because I I, I I really hate to admit this on camera, but I am older. <laughs> so you're the more you know, refined version. Okay. And and and, and, and bar our, professions, older. our professions are different. So in your space, you are probably you are allowed to be what I would sometimes like to be. You are allowed in your space to say to people how you really feel. I have to channel that down and out and through prayer because I cannot always say to people how they make me feel. And so I, yes, I have been able to refine and really, 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 I mean, in all seriousness, like walking this. Can you do something for me walk, that has touched me all my life? Being a and, I, and I want you to, and I know this is like totally impromptu. But do you remember the song, the gospel song that you always sing? Can you just give me a what little song bit. Is that? Are you at every family reunion? Me? Like you, yeah, you. You are. Are you mistaking me from for Carla? Girl, please, I am mistaking you for me. <laughs> Motherfucking body ever. It was a like, church song. Uh, yeah. Do you know any song that ain't the church song? Yeah, I know a couple of Nat Natalie Cole. Um, you yes. do? Really? But yeah, I've never heard you know what? They, not they to change the subject, but Kennedy, when I tell you this girl knows every genre of music. So we had a surprise mm -hmm. party for my mom this summer, and she did the playlist. And because because I organized a party, everybody was like, oh my God, um, she could, man, where you buying that somewhere? And I was like, Kennedy did, but it was like, she was 11 at that time. So dope. I mean, this girl. So like her mom. I love oh her. Oh my God. Birthday. Coming to Thursday, Scarfield. Ooh, so really? Like, mm. I know. Mm. And do you know, you know, you know. That's another thing. You know that your size yes. is like really, truly the only sign that really gets along with my sign, which is Aries. Jump wait. April fourth, baby. April. And then April eighth, and we love the shit out of you. <laughs> That's like like Sagittarius is really though. Well, we a fire sign, and so Sagittarius, Leo, like a lot of signs get can fuck with us, but you and we love the shit out of you. Because I'm being understanding too. and compassionate. No, 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 no. You cool. You just so mm -hmm. dope. You special. You a little different. I really, I really, stuff. really, really, and you've always said that. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes feel like you don't give others a chance. I'm glad that you gave me a chance. It ain't that I gave a chance. It's just what it is. But okay. whatever. Okay. You and she, you, she, you. So there was, I mean, this conversation. Is I need therapy. <laughs> but you are like you are so dope, though. When is your brother's birthday? I like August twenty. Yeah, yeah. Like my mom. I love my mom. 
<laughs> Every camera. <laughs> I love, I but Leo, like, it's a fire, it's a fire sign too. Yeah. And like I like the one, you know, we really grit it. I'm going to I'm gonna do something with Duana. I'm paying Duana to come down. Her brother plays the sax. Brother dope. Brother dope. Yeah, my brother dope. We gonna fuck with his brother. Yeah, her brother's my brother. shit. Her brother's yeah. dope. I but see like y'all camera, Dewan, you are the baddest saxophone player. Oh my god. The world just needs to. Do you know you can't if my daddy's feeling on the plate? Like y'all, oh, like, and it, it, it's. It, 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 let me tell you, the reason I ain't gonna say it's the whole reason, but the reason why I love Marianne so much because her kids so fucking dope. Like she gotta be dope. You know what but, I'm saying? But, like but I because love of who she her. Is, we are. Yes. Yeah, like, so it's like mom, impossible mom. for me not to love her because you and him are like my mom, the dopest. And you know what? <clears throat> I don't. When know. is her birthday? Um, July, okay. <laughs> she about to rip really? me. So she celebrates it July the 14th. <laughs> and that's what she was told. But her, you know, years later, she found out her birth certificate said June 14th, you know, me oh arrived. June, so July. I just was telling oh her, God. like, Mama, just celebrate the whole month. She gets mad if you tell her her birthday is June 14th. But it because was really she's July 14th. All, so it was really June 14th. She's always celebrated it July 14th. I just said, girl, you have the benefit of having a month long birthday. Let's just do this thing. But she gets really upset about that. But <laughs> my, honestly, my mom, ooh, I'm trying not to let tears roll. Does my mom is probably the only person I know that I don't know anybody who has a bad word to say about my mom. No, your mom. I don't know nobody. And I'm not just saying this because your mom she is, is a my bomb. mom. Your mom was that a bomb. That one, there is nobody I know. That can say anything about They can your say mom. anything bad about my mom. And it's so funny because you are like, okay, so you like my favorite person ever, my favorite cousin, my dad's side, and then I got a mom. But my mom's, everybody knows your mom. <laughs> you know why, because Kirkwood. Yeah. But my father's side and my mother's side, because they all kind of live in the whole mm -hmm. same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves your mama. Like, yeah. and, then, I, I just, and I mean, you know, listen, like, what's really funny, when my mother found out that your mother was a tippet, she was like, wait, I like her. <laughs> Like what? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. She was like, she's not. She's married into the family. No. She's not like no. <laughs> she is like tippet, right? She's like yeah. And my yeah. mother refused to believe never, that your mother was really a tippet. On purpose. <laughs> that she's cool. I never heard anyone have anything negative to say about Mary Ann Tippet. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm she dope. blessed, privileged she dope. to have my girl rocking with me, and she yeah, she, she says I'm her idol, and she'll be like, "Is there anything you can't do?" I'm like, "Is there anything you, you can't can do? Where you think I get it? Where she you think dope. I get it from?" I know, so that's so cool. And Kennedy, like, "Oh my God, y'all all get on my nerves. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Too, too much love. Too much pressure. You know what? To be great. I love you." And you no, but my cousin, my auntie says, stop talking. Like, how you gonna tell somebody you love them more? I like that. I like saying that too. But you really can't say it to me because I was first. I was older. I'm older, so I can love you more. But you can't really love me more. I, but I can love you more today than I did on yesterday. Uh -huh. <sighs> Look at you trying to be all like, oh, sharp and shit. Uh -huh. I can't do Thank that. you for coming and eating lunch with me and making Girl, time in the middle of your religiousness. It was so cool. really good. We're going to bring the show to Chicago. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's have a, um, yeah, we could, woo, don't play. That right. sounds dope. Right, I got a whole bunch of women to bring to the table where you can We can talk, we can have a kitchen. circle. Yeah, but kitchen and I can cook and we can talk about some topics. Since I don't, I'm not a drinker. Uh -huh. What is the proper way to hold a long skin wine glass? Because you don't want to change the temperature of the water. Okay. Uh, when you I, do this, I'm this, camera, this warms it. Okay. This changes the temperature of the wine. That's what the stem is for. Okay. I do that. Actually. No problem. I got you, guys. I want to be bright. Sitting among kings and queens, I want to. <laughs>
Of course. Be right. Thank you. What I want, more importantly, you are always impressive. Continue to be amazing. Continue to pray for me because I know you do. P R A Y. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't, I ain't praying on you. I ain't praying on you, but yes, I would definitely pray you, for you. You never have. Like, I love you. Like, like I fuss with you. I, I is, think you dope. But that's you. It ain't me, it's you. You are like dope. I'm like, Carol, man, I look, love you're you. the only person I know who can go to sleep and wake up and start a business and. <laughs> Well, this child. Yeah, that's whatever. You, you, you were the, you were the genius in that.